giants of the fossil fuel era. In the endless quest for coal, they often bulldoze whatever stands in their way. Dozens of villages have already been flattened, and it seems Lützerath will be next. The district government decided to expropriate. But residents and activists are fighting back. They don't want more coal-powered electricity. Where's the sense in touting an energy transition while flattening a village to mine more coal? We're en route to Lützerath, in the far west of Germany. More than 1,500 people once lived here and in the neighboring villages. Most have now moved away. In their place, climate activists have come. There are currently about 100 of them here. There are also private security forces working for energy company RWE. They keep an eye on what's going on here. Lützerath lies within a few dozen meters of the Gottsweiler 2 open-cast mine, which locals simply call the hole. Every year across Germany, RWE produces about 100 million tons of lignite brown coal. They're pushing further and further into the land, coming closer and closer to Lützerath. The excavators aren't going to stop of their own accord. For years, we've had the sense that they're eating everything up. The pit keeps getting bigger. I used to live in the village of Boschenik. That's gone. On and on it goes. So far, farmer Eckhard Hoykamp has held on to his farm. But of the 100 hectares he once had, he now owns just 17. The rest have been expropriated. And RWE also wants his remaining fields and his farm. He's taken the matter to court. It's a fight that's dragged on for years and cost him nearly 100,000 euros. The David versus Goliath struggle has led to some branding him a hero. I don't see myself as a hero. It's just the way it is. It's a big issue here now, and a lot of people come, including the media, doing stories about it. But it will all blow over once the matter is settled. But it's not over yet, and Hoykamp stresses that he's always open to talks. But he doesn't think RWE wants to negotiate seriously. The company won't comment in front of our cameras. They respond to our inquiries only in writing and in very general terms. They say the coal is needed to secure energy supplies for a transitional period as a step towards a climate-neutral system. In the past, the local coal deposits were a key part of this. But Hoykamp has seen studies that say otherwise. You can get there without impacting the villages around Kainberg, including Lützerath. Energy companies have enough coal to secure the energy supply. But the conflict goes deeper than a legal dispute between a billion-dollar corporation and one farmer. The big question is, how fast should Germany's transition to greener energy be? The country wants to become climate neutral by 2045. The activists here say the transition to renewables is too slow. For years, hundreds of them have been supporting the farmer. They've set up camp next to the farm. One of them is Florian Utschan. The 30-year-old studies philosophy. Living in a camp like this is new for him, but he's long been politically active, including campaigning for new refugee policy. The fact that I am here has to do with new friends I met before we came. They convinced me that the climate crisis is the most urgent challenge facing humanity at the moment. The survival of humanity depends on it, and especially the survival of people in the global south. They sleep in huts in the trees, wooden shacks, or RWE-owned buildings which they've occupied. The resistance is working here in that we've created an occupation, a camp, 
an diesem Camp, in diesem Camp, in this camp wir uns we organize ourselves. In the morning, we distribute the necessary tasks, whether it's cleaning the toilet or shifts in the kitchen. Their next goal is to put on an event to save Lützerath. That's also Oliver Kanneberg's aim. For almost 20 years, the Siemens employee lived with his wife and daughter in this house in Kukum, a few minutes' drive from Lützerath. Today, it no longer belongs to him. It's owned by RWE and it's empty, because Kukum is also said to be demolished. We were forced to sell. We didn't go voluntarily. We only had one buyer, and that was RWE. At some point, as a family, we had to say, despite the big resistance we've put up, we're selling. We see ourselves as resettlers by necessity. But Kukum is set to survive after all. That's thanks to the change of federal government. According to the new coalition agreement, the town won't have to give way to open cast mining. Just when Oliver Kanneberg was coming to terms with his situation. After we moved away, for almost two years, I couldn't come here because I couldn't bear it. How the place was decaying and how the village and our house would probably suffer the same fate as others before them. One such place is Mannheim, a half hour drive south. In this village, most of the houses have been demolished. The church has been closed. The heaps of earth are being used to shore up the open cast mine. The future of Lützerath the village of farmer Eckhard Hoekamp will likely be decided by the courts. RWE's position is clear. The company needs legal clarity. So long as there are no new laws, the existing plans still apply. Those plans include the end of Lützerath. Oliver Kanneberg can't understand it, especially since the new federal government has been clear about the imminent end of open cast mining. Regardless of politics, above all, he'd like to buy back his old house from RWE. Everybody says the villages will remain as they are, but RWE basically just carries on as if nothing had changed. That's really disappointing for us, including in the sense that you could come to the table and say, OK, how can we fix this and bring these villages back to life? What's happening now just hurts all over again. Another Kukum resident is student David Dresen. His family is one of the few who didn't sell their farm to RWE. Much like farmer Hoekamp, David is less concerned about money than about the fate of his home. I've made a conscious decision to continue my life here at my grandparents' farm. It means a great deal to me to be able to take the horses out in the morning, to be among the chickens. We also have our own orchard, with our own apples and pears. David and his family are relieved that the village of Kukum will remain standing after all. Now they want to save Lützerat, farmer Hoekamp's village too. The struggle over their own home involved five years of bitter fighting. There were often moments when I didn't know how I'd go on, but something always gave me strength. I knew that in the end, we had to prevail, because it wasn't just about our little house. In the end, it's a fight that revolves around the climate crisis and also involves many people in the global south who can't fight. A few days later, there's a protest to save Lützerath. Several hundred have come, many from neighboring villages and also former residents who've had to move away. The protest is being live-streamed on social media. Florian Utzschan prepares for his role as MC. More protesters arrive. Not all of them want to be recognized. It's just monstrous what's being destroyed in terms of land people being displaced, cultural assets and so on. 
You don't need to do this anymore. RVA keeps going, which is really terrible. Most of the demonstrators stay in one part of Lützerath, but on the other side of the village, the protest takes a turn. Activists suddenly occupy a building that's been bought up by RVA. Until now, it's been used by the company's own security forces who are standing guard. This is our house, shout the protesters. It'll remain our house. The RVA security forces are taken by surprise. They retreat as activists take control of the building. Oliver Kanneberg wonders why there aren't police here, like at previous demonstrations. I see it like this. The government and the police have now determined that things can't go on like this. RVA has basically been using the government and the police to push through its own interests. A few meters away, David Dresen and his mother are collecting donations for the preservation of Lützerath. The cameras are aimed at the stage as Florian talks to the crowd. Hi, I'm Florian. I'm an activist here in Lützerath, and I'm one of the presenters here to guide you through this live stream today. This is resistance streamed live to the world. Farmer Eckhard Hoykamp hopes the message will eventually reach RWE. It's clear to everyone that lignite is the biggest polluter in our country as far as CO2 is concerned. You can't just sweep it under the rug. So I think the end of lignite is obvious to energy company RWE as well. RWE has already announced plans to invest billions in green energy. But so long as the company wants to destroy the village of Lützerath, such promises won't change the mood here.